ones who are being persecuted in the Middle East, the ones who are really being martyred there are being discriminated against. We have an active policy in our State Department to make it difficult for Christians who really have nowhere else to go. That's right. Tell us about that when we come back. Absolutely. We'll be back. Stay with us. William F. Jasper is our guest. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. William F. Jasper is with us five minutes to the next hour. Then we've got Paul Joseph Watson in studio, our reporters on the ground as Obama prepares to land in the next hour in Roseburg, Oregon. If you're a new listener and you wonder what's going on, the British Empire, this is simplified 60-second history, and we'll get Jasper's take on it. He's a bigger expert than I am, but this is how it worked. The British Empire, run by private corporations, had taken over probably 40% of the world. The sun never set on it. Some estimates are 50%. You have the Dutch Empire and the French Empire and the Spanish Empire and the Russian Empire and the American Empire was growing by then as well after uh, the Spanish-American War. It was really when we became an empire. That's admitted by historians. And a lot of the robber barons wanted a corporate global empire by buying off presidents, buying off kings, buying off other companies, consolidating those, using mercenaries in skirmishes with locals, indigenous that didn't want to go along with it. And after World War I, they had League of Nations, and they argued, let's have this big combine and never have a war again. But then, of course, that went into World War II. And the argument is, let's have global government run by corporations that'll stop these wars. But they're the very groups stirring up the wars so they can then point for global government to stop the wars. And they're the ones nine times out of ten destabilizing, starting the crisis, or exacerbating it. And so we don't face foreign armies, foreign tanks now. That's only at one small level of it. We face economic warfare. We face a takeover. And it's a cultural takeover as well. And it doesn't give any quarter. And it's a world where the social compact is out the door and where they want to purposely make people poor and highly controlled. Cloward and Piven is only one aspect of that. we got three minutes left in this segment, five-minute segment after that. I want to try to give you the floor in these little segments, William F. Jasper. But I think really getting big picture for people is the key here. And now that it's all admitted, and I just can't believe how incredibly accurate you guys got it 30, 40 years ago, I think we really have to celebrate the fact that we, the conspiracy theorists, we, the constitutionalists, really did get it right. And that we are the real opposition to this planetary tyranny. And I think people can wake up pretty quick to that and then form the proper opposition. Well, yes. I mean, the, the record is there. And we have huge archives of, of stories on our website uh, that go back uh, 30, 40, 50 years. And so people can judge for themselves. They can say, uh, gee, uh, they were right 30, 40, 50 years ago, and they've called it. This is, uh, they said this is what was going to happen if these th things were allowed to take place, and that is exactly what has happened, and the world doesn't look so good uh, compared to uh, what it could be, what it should be. Uh, so I, I think people, uh, we're at a very crucial point in our history now, and if people can uh, tear themselves away from the establishment media and away from their Oprah Winfrey or their uh, Kardashians or whatever they watch or whatever other diversions are keeping them from, from looking at, at the hard truths, uh, we can have a massive wake up very quickly and people can put the pieces together because there have been some, some very good people over a long period of time that have been sorting all this out and uh, putting it together for them. And so really now uh, the information is all there. Uh, it's, it's kind of complex, it's very large, but if you boil it down to the key principles, which are if you want to maintain liberty, then you have to have separations of power. You have to keep as much power local as possible. You have to keep national sovereignty. And all of the forces at work that we're talking about today that we're discussing are working in the opposite direction to take away local control, to take away national sovereignty, to concentrate us into a global government, a global economy. And that's what we have to look at as, as the- uh, I agree, stay there, do five more minutes with us and we'll let you go. William F. Jasper, third hour coming up. Now we have a fourth hour as well. Stay with us in four wars.com's the free streams spread them with people share them with people and share your local affiliate streams as well
Coming up, I've got a video that's really a paradox. You've got a video where the cop lets the guy shoot him and still doesn't shoot him and says, please don't make us kill you. You pull a gun on me, I'm going to shoot you. And then another one where the South Carolina cop shoots the black guy in the back. They've now had to pay $6.5 million. He's obviously been indicted. Yeah, there's two extremes. The cop, you don't want to be shooting somebody in the back. And the other cop, you don't want to be letting someone shoot you. I mean, this is just two extremes of total insanity. We'll play the video of both. Uh, going back to William F. Jasper, we got about four minutes left in this segment. What comes next? How do we fight him? What do we do? Well, uh, both, for instance, we, we started out talking about the TPP, the Transatlantic Policy uh, uh, Program. And uh, the big battle is going to be in the House and in the Senate. And uh, right now we have the battle going for a Speaker of the House. And it's interesting that Daryl Issa is one of the key people running for Speaker of the House. And uh, that's significant in this particular battle and on many others, because although he has a reputation as being a conservative Republican, uh, he is a member of the Transatlantic Policy Network, which is run by the aforementioned Peter Sutherland, the grandmaster of the Bilderberg uh, trilateral uh, internationalist uh, Goldman Sachs agenda. He really is so, the new David Rockefeller, isn't he? Yes. And uh, I mean, uh, as we pointed out earlier, he is also not only promoting the TPP and the TTIP, but also the big refugee swarm into Europe after having helped uh, bring together the whole borderless Europe program while he was working as the uh, president of the European Commission. Lower the borders, blow up the Middle East, North Africa, bring in the hordes. Right. So so he is a key operative there. And Daryl Issa, whether he gets the speakership or not, is going to be, it's just one of, in our special uh, report that we did on the Transatlantic Policy Network, we listed all the senators. Uh, that's called uh, the our special uh, article, Trading Away Their Oaths. We pointed out all the senators, such as Thad Cochran, Mark Kirk, Barbara Mikulski, Pat Roberts, Roger Wicker, that are members of the TPN. And then we listed the, um, the House members as well. They're all going to be critical votes. And a lot of people think that some of these uh, representatives, because they are conservative Republicans, quote unquote, are going to be uh, reliable votes on this, uh, need to realize that many of them have been bought off, bribed off, or, or in, in one way or another influenced to jump on board this sovereignty-destroying, independence-destroying, globalist program. Sure, and the, the media is acting like only socialists don't like it, and it's a leftist issue because Bernie Sanders is against it. Absolutely. But Bernie Sanders, uh, of course, could flip just as he did on the Federal Reserve bill and sabotage the audit of the Federal Reserve after Ron Paul got a a good one through the House. Bernie Sanders sabotaged it in the Senate, and he could do the same thing on this as well. Uh, Matt, that's what frequently happens. The controlled opposition puts up a fight, takes the center stage so that no other genuine opponents can surface. And then when the critical time comes, they fold and uh, jump to the other side. So we have a real battle uh, before us on the TPP and then following up on the TTIP. Uh, a lot of people say it's over now. We can't do it. That's, that's uh, Not true. part of the strategy of defeatism. No, uh, it's just begun. Just Even if they get off. this through, look at all these European countries wanting out of the euro. Look at England demanding to get out. Now Absolutely. that we force Absolutely. a debate, admit it's illegitimate, that's the end of it. Right. I, I mean, so this is really a house of cards that they've built. They've made it look very formidable. And it is because we keep allowing them to take our tax dollars and work against us. Uh, to fund our enemies and to fund uh, hostile takeovers. Uh, That's why Rand Paul's own. right. End all foreign aid. William F. Jasper, great job. We need to get you back up more often. Thanks for the time. TheNewAmerican.com. Read his amazing writings there. Thank you, William. Thank you, Al. Folks, those guys right there are the original patriot heroes, the first Paul Revere's to really ring the alarm bell. They're it.